Hey everyone, let me explain this here. Today I'm going to go over what I think are the five best decks in Legend of Runeterra and an honorable mention. Uh, I could have ordered it if it was like first best, second best, third best, fourth best, but uh, it's kind of subjective, so I'm just going to go over what I think the five best decks are and I guess briefly go over them. First up, we have Lux Aurelian Soul. Lux Aurelian Soul is the first deck I'm going to go over on, um, I think, the five best decks of Legend of Runeterra. It has three Solar Soldier, three Galleon Touch. Three Pell Cascade, three Single Combat, three Slayer Shield Bearer, three Hush, three Grizzled Ranger, three Concerted Strike, three Radiant Guardian, three Star Shaping, three Lux, three Membrance, one Sunburst, three Reliant Soul. Basically, this deck is just like a well rounded uh, mid range control type deck, and you can get Radiant Guardian in the field, which uh, is the 5 5 Life Steal Tough, if it out of this round. And you can, once you get here, you can kind of just like control the game with Radiant Guardian, Game Act Life. is hard to remove, it's hard to deal with. Um, with the single combats and the concerted strikes. And then you can get down Lux. And basically, this is like a very reliable way to get to turn 10. And in turn 10, you just play Radiant Soul as your finisher and you win with that. But Lux can win the game by herself too. Remember, it's on three is very good because you can play a, on three. You pass your first two turns, you can play a very strong unit very early. Um, pretty much hard to put pressure on because of the Slayer Soldier and the Slayer Shield Bearer. So, just a well rounded deck that's able to reliably make it to turn 10 and then one Thrillian Soul. Lux can, again, can remove the threats with the Final Spark, put on a lot of pressure. Overall, just a really well rounded deck. Can utilize Hush uh, a lot better than most decks because since Hush costs three, right? But then it gives you a fleeting copy, so you get another one. If you use hu one Hush, it gives you another copy of Hush, which is six mana. And then Lux is when you've seen six plus mana spells cast, you get the um, final spark. So pretty straightforward, pretty good deck. Second deck I want to go over is Trundle Aesol. This is another Aurelian Soul deck. Uh, it's a ramping deck. So basically the goal is to ramp and then get to round uh, eight. You can play Infinite Mind Splitter, pick two enemies and stun them. It's effectively like like removes them from the game if, if they can't clear the infinite mind splitter then they're basically removed from the game they can never attack again or block and then you just went with the rallying soul as well so as like the last deck this deck's another gets a turn 10 and then finish with the rallying soul with the rallying soul deck but three spacey sketcher three troll chant three troll scavenger three hush three warring stones three avalanche three babbling bjerg three cast of aeons three star shaping three chundle Three Revitalizing Roar, one Ice Quake, three Infinite Mind Splitter, three Alien Soul. So you can ramp up with Warding Stones, get an extra Mana Gem this round, and Catalyst of Aeons, get an extra, or get an empty Mana Gem in here next to three. A lot of healing, a lot of stalling, and it's very good because if uh, they try to develop, you can punish them by playing Avalanche um, and stuff like that. But if they're like, okay, well, he has Avalanche, I don't want to just play my units, and they all just die, steal two to all units, then they attack. Then you're okay. Well, they they attack with a weaker board because they didn't develop an extra creature, so you're only taking a bit of damage. Then you can just heal right back with Star Shaping, invoke a Celestial. Pick a Celestial. It's a, uh, the Celestials are really really strong cards. So you invoke a, it adds a really strong card to your hand, costs seven or more, and then heal your Nexus five and ally your Nexus five. So basically, if they attack, they develop. You use Avalanche and kill their units that they just played, and they lose a lot of tempo. Or if they attack, then you can just play Star Shaping and heal it all back. And it's not going to be much damage because they didn't develop because they were afraid of Avalanche. You can also use Catalyst of Aeons to heal it back. And overall, really good deck. Uh, turn 2, you summon a 4-3. When I'm summoned, if you behold an A-plus card, grant me plus 3 plus 0. Behold just means you just have to have an A-plus card in your hand or field. So you play 4-3 on 2. It's hard to deal with that. This can stop a lot of things in its tracks. It's just more around the card. And Trundle, because it's very good that you can ramp the Trundle. You play Warring Stones on turn 3, get an extra uh, mana gem. And then on turn 4, you play Trundle, which is a 4-6 regeneration, which is adds Ice Blood to your hand. So, very, very, very hard to beat early on if you can get that off. Overall, really good deck. Next one, another control deck, is War Mothers. It's called War Mothers. It's centered around the card War Mothers Call. Uh, it costs 12, so you have to have full mana or nine mana and then spell mana on top of that so some of the top ally from your deck now and each round and you basically want to be something trinomir from that you hope you get trinomir so this can someone trinomir each each round to the top of your deck it's someone to an ally someone trinomir from your deck or she wonders what gets effect that's a 10 10 regeneration but it's another control deck um 
also runs Chol Chan, so we can go over that quick quick. Three Chol Chan, three Speak with Horror, three Vile Feast, three Warring Stones, three Avarice and Heart Guard, three Castle Veons, two Grasp of Undying, three Trundle, three Withering Whale, two Atrocity, three Vengeance, three Trendomir, two Ruination, one She Wonders, three Warner's Call. Just another stall control deck. Um, it's very hard to beat uh, the constant removal and healing. Um, and then you can just play the Warring Stones, which ramps you right to five. So the turn three plays on turn four, you can play uh, the Hearth Guard or the Trundle. If it's the same thing as they develop, you can um, do have to punish them. This has like Withering Whales. Uh, not it's it's mostly a Withering Whale, and you can combine it with Unspeakable Horror Vile Feast, so that way that you kill a creature and heal a lot. And uh, Runation is good at punishing uh, develops later into the game. They have to be constantly afraid of Runation. Trust can finish the game off. Very good. Just a different style of control deck with um, War Mother's Call as the finisher. Next, we have, so we had like a mid-range control deck, um, another control deck, and then another control deck. So three three control decks, or, you know, depending on you look at them, a mid-range and two control decks. And we have two more, and then honorable mention. Next we have, uh, I'm gonna do this, this deck in two segments. It's it's two different variations of the deck. This is more of a aggressive deck, is an aggro deck, but it's a very aggro version and a more mid-range version. We'll start with the mid-range. There's only a few cards different. Okay, so we have, uh, this deck got rank, this rank one NA currently. This is the very, very, very current, like in the moment, rank one North America deck. Um, it's an aggro deck with Gangplank and Twisted Fate. They put a lot of pressure uh, with the aggro cards, but you can also use the Death Sand and uh, the Twisted Fate stuff as removal. Perhaps it'll help you get a lot of value because it gives you a free unit. Summon a, uh, when you summon, you can summon a random one cost follower. So you're putting a lot, a lot of pressure and it's hard to remove all their pressure they're putting on you while you're chipping away damage and you can basically like kill people very, very easily before they ever get to stop dealing with the threats. But let's go through the deck. Three Warring Shot, three Jagged Butcher, two Ravenous Flock, three Black Market Merchant, three Hired Gun, three Make It Rain, three Death Sand, one Noxian Guillotine, three Petty Officer, three Twisted Fate, three Yodel Grifter, three Zap Sprayfin, three Gangplank, one Captain Fair, and three Rip Red Rex. Um, yeah, it basically is just like an aggro deck that doesn't run out of steam. You can keep up a uh, huge pressure, but you still have the removal like the Ravenous Flock and the Guillotine and the Death Hand. This is a more of a mid-range version. There's like an all-out aggro version, which instead of Twisted Fate, it runs Misfortune in a bit more aggressive style. I'm going to show that after this deck, but they're, they're pretty similar. This is just more of a mid-range version if you prefer this. But this one finishes with like Ripside Rex and Captain Farron. And the one finishes with Jack the Winner. So this is the mid-range version. As you can see, a lot of putting a lot of pressure, but has a lot of good control tools. Um, definitely can deal a lot of damage per turn, but again, not run out of steam and has finishers like Rex, which are good at closing out the game and Farron. And uh, Yellow Grifter can nab you an extra card. This gives you more card advantage by getting a free card. Nox and Gideon can deal with a lot of threats, Ravis Flock, etc. And then that's that's a mid range version, but the aggro version, gonna cut this as one deck, even though they are very different, but. It's basically two decks, I guess. Um, three Jagged Butcher, three Legion of Sabotar, three Precious Pet, one Driveway Deckhand, three Imperial Demolitionist, three Legion Grenadier, three Make It Rain, three Misfortune, three Doxian Fervor, three Petty Officer, three Death Raven, three Decimate, three Gangplank Jack's Winner. Honestly, they're actually very different, but they're both Gangplank. Uh, Bar Noxus, they're, they're very different. This one's all aggro, last one's mid-range. Um, you have burn spells like Decimate, you have Fervor, um, you have all kinds of stuff. This the, you know, the the one drops. You have nine one drops to start a very good strategy. Jack the winner. Round start. Create a fleeting sleep with the fishes in hand. Deal two to an ally. Deal two to the maxes. This one's a traditional aggro deck. Um, you just try and do as much damage as possible. You um, don't stop pressuring them. You want to end the game around like turn six seven. Even early earlier if you're able to. But round six or seven be great. Um, you very reliably level up game play in this deck. Misfortune is very powerful in this deck because with Make It Rain, a lot of uh, the one damage pings and even Drive Deck Hand to make, make Misfortune's uh, ability uh, do more damage, like the two damage. It's hard for them to block because they lose a lot of value uh, blocking against Misfortune, and you get to keep your board while you're attacking while doing a lot of damage and getting favorable trades, which is uh, very good because a lot of times Agrax run out of steam, but you can uh, get favorable trades in this deck, so you have board control 
the whole time and basically they lose tempo before you and then you can finish them before they can ever come back so aggro burn finishers very good actually a lot it's a lot different than the separate decks mid the mid range and the, the aggro and then the last deck is actually my nightfall deck i think that nightfall is a tier one deck i think it's top five deck but i'll go through it Three Fading Memories, Three Nara Dustbringer, Three Sturdy Soldier, Three Stitching Onlooker, Three Behold the Infinite, Three Diana, Three The Nair Shade Stalker, Three Pale Cascade, Three Stalking Shadows, Three Unspeakable Horror, Three Crescent Guardian, Three Doom Beast, Three Nocturne, and One Soonest the Moon Stalker. Oh, we're on the deck. We're on a mid range deck. Uh, you can play aggressive when it's time to play aggressive if you have the damage output. It depends on your hands, which you draw a lot of time, but pretty versatile deck. If you have like Slayer Soldier, Sidney Onlooker, look Looker, you can. Um, be aggressive and try and present a lot of damage. That's what you're supposed to do in that matchup. Uh, I have a separate video for this deck uh, if you want to learn how to play this deck. But you can also just um, get good trades with Pale Cascade, Unspeakable Horror, um, Stalking Shadow can generate you good advantage by giving you free cards. And then you can try and finish later with Nocturne. Uh, very good deck. I think it has a lot of good matchups. Can struggle a bit against War Mothers, but. Uh, it's very good against the Village Water decks. And then Honorable Mention is a new deck that came out because Lee Sin got buffed. So it's a Lee Sin deck. It's Celestial Lee Sin. Um, I'll go right into it. The only champion in this deck is Lee Sin. I'll be explained why in a second. But this is a Lee Sin deck. Lee Sin just got buffed, and he's probably one of the best champions of the whole game. So Honorable Mention. Is it Tier 1? I'm not entirely sure. I'd still say they're 5 or slightly better, but this could easily be as good as them. So three Gift Giver, three Spacey Sketcher, three Behold the Infinite, three Out the Dragon, three Guiding Touch, three Pale Cascade, one Hush, three Mentor of the Stones, three Solar Priestess, three Zenith Blade, three Concussive Palm, two Deny, three Lee Sin, two Deep Meditation, two Livonia. You can run three Deny if you want, and like take out a Concussive Palm or something. Uh, it's up to you. Probably play three. Some people play uh, two Gift Giver, but point is it's still Lee Sin deck. So when you cast a spell, give me Challenger this round. If cast another spell, give me Barrier. So he can challenge, which means um, you can hook in a blocker and choose who blocks him. Just removing the units for free along with the Barrier. So he gets the, the, the hook and gets to attack, but the Barrier saves him. When he's leveled up, he casts a Dragon Rage on them. And Dragon Rage is when he attacks an, uh, an enemy, he strikes that enemy and the Nexus. And he puts the card to their hand. So he, sh he kicks an enemy into the enemy Nexus, striking both the, the enemy and the Nexus. But Zenith Blade, grant an alley plus one plus two and overwhelm. Overwhelm, accepts damage, ideal to a blocker. Dump them next. It's like a combo deck, basically. You want to get Overwhelm on Lee Sin, so then when he does the Dragon's Rage, he, att he attacks the Nexus. But since he's Overwhelm and the enemy like gets put off the field, he attacks the Nexus twice, basically, because the, the Overwhelm damage goes through the Nexus, plus he's also attacking the Nexus. So if he were like a uh, six attack or something, then he'd be doing 12 damage. So, very, I believe, right? Yeah. So, very good. Um, Solaria Priestess, Daybreak Invoke a Celestial card that costs 4, 5, or 6. One of the Celestial cards is... So, you, so Invoke means you, a 3 of these will randomly be in your hand, but they're 4, 5, or 6 costing for Slayer Soldier. So you get rid of the stars, draw a champion, reduce its cost by 1, get it plus 2, plus 2. Since Lee Sin's your only champion, you'll be getting Lee Sin, and you'll get a discounted cost Lee Sin's plus 2, plus 2. Which is uh, amazing. So um, that's why you run uh, just Lee Sin as the champion, or one of the main reasons you run just Lee Sin as the champion. Basically, a combo deck. If you don't draw the Lee Sin, you still can invoke with Behold the Infinite and the Slayer Priestess. Mentor the Stones is really good. Grant my support ally plus two plus two. You can even get that out of the dragon and give it Zenith Blade and control the game with uh, the Dragonlings. So, overall, very good deck. A lot of decks can't deal with Lee Sin. He's very powerful and Deals a lot of damage extremely fast. He can kill you in one turn easily. And you can also just chip away at their units to get board control and put a lot of pressure on them. Also, uh, Deny, a good reason, our main reason to run three Deny, is it's good against the Warmother deck because the Warmother deck that I showed earlier has a lot of spells, including the Warmother's Call. If you deny this, that's 12 mana. That was denied. 12 mana spell that was denied. So, pretty good. Overall, I think those are the top five decks in the game. I hope you enjoyed the video. I should be having daily videos every single day. Uh, I'm thinking about a lot of deck guides. I'm thinking about a champion tier list, the best champions. I'll have the codes down below in the description of all the decks so you guys can make them and play them for yourselves. But 
I believe those are the top five, six, seven, depending on look at it. Uh, decks right now in the game. So yeah, top, top seven decks in the game. And uh, feel free, I stream daily on Twitch. Feel free to follow me on Twitch, grab on YouTube. But I hope you enjoyed the video. I want to make sure you get guys content on uh, best decks or like people ask me about how to deck build, uh, how to get ranked, because I, I get ranked on every format, like uh, how to rank up and stuff like that. So this should be a video if you're looking to rank up. Pick whatever those five decks, or seven, I guess, whatever. Uh, people do the most, and I honestly just stick with that, learn all the matchups. I think that if you switch between too many decks, you'll be losing because you'll be not, like, you'll be comfortable with your deck more so than individual mistakes. You kind of want to stick with the deck, learn as much as you can about it, and then pinpoint where you're messing up and get better so you don't really have any holes. Uh, and you can become very good with the deck and rank up. But yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. See you guys later. Peace.